Hey everybody, this is Nathan Zouder from Drake, Ontario, and you are watching Trucker Josh Vlogs on YouTube. Good morning, Diesel. From Old Blue. Good morning, Minnesota. Good morning, sunshine. It's hot. Good morning, Old Blue. Got some bugs on her already, but that's okay. We got ourselves a load to deliver. And we have a preloaded trailer waiting for us in Rosemont, Minnesota. It's gonna be fun. We're gonna load it up. We might even get home today yet. Tell you what, I didn't do like a proper maiden voyage video yesterday because yesterday was just crazy we went into the, the doctors or the clinic in the morning and it turned out we didn't it wasn't what we thought it was the big appointment is actually next tuesday so i went back to work we're down here in minnesota now we brought a lot, load of lumber from kenora down here in brainerd minnesota then from here i'm going down to rosemont minnesota grabbing a load of cement or concrete pulling it on back home and it's the first trip in Old Blue. Like I was saying in yesterday's video, I was really hoping to make the first trip in Old Blue a very special video, a maiden voyage video. So I didn't quite get that yesterday because it was a rush, 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 rush. And today isn't too, too different, but it's a little bit more slower pace. So today will be the official maiden voyage video. It's the first full day in Old Blue. How you doing, Weasel? You ready, Diesel? The show on the road. Yeah, just to make sure they're still working. Let's go get this lumber off my trailer and go trade it for some concrete. How about that? They should be expecting us there, so. Should be able to get unloaded as soon as we get there. As soon as I get the tarps off, anyway. Got in town pretty late yesterday. I'd like to reset my schedule today, but I might also make it home late today. Car coming. sound of those uh, air intakes right there. When the truck is really pulling, you can hear it sucking the soul out of you almost. Just... I was telling my buddy Moses, I and mean, man, this truck sucks so much air. I hope it leaves some oxygen for me. 
You guys have got to hear these air intakes a little better though. It's intense. You might have to leave the window closed or it'll suck you right in. <laughs> I was talking to my buddy Moses who drives a W9 as well. I said, is this normal? He's like, oh yeah, that's just the sound of horsepower, baby. <laughs> oh, I'm not used to that. Listen to this. You can hear it sucking in the air vents here when I take off. When it's really pulling hard. I did drive a W9 in the past. I guess I just, it's been so long since I've been in a real truck. Diesel, what do you think of it? What do you think of it, man? It's very noisy. I like it. It's very nice noisy. It's a nice noise. Nice noisy. Noisy nice. Great input, Diesel. Great input. I'm speechless. That's all it is. Speechless. Me too. I love this truck a lot. Definitely a good buy. And a lot of you were asking if this high stick shift is annoying having it way up here. No, I actually like it better. It's actually more comfortable than when it's down here. I feel almost like it's more natural. Like maybe not in the forward position here, but when it's back here when you're on the highway, it's at the perfect height. Okay, green light, come on, I wanna show them this. Listen to this thing right here. Okay, once we get going. sort of feather in the pedal. I'll give her a little bit and I'll lean into it a little bit, but it had more. Very impressed. To me, what trucking is, it, it, trucking is supposed to be fun. You're supposed to enjoy what you're doing, enjoy your truck. I've wanted to be in a W900 like this for a, a very, very long time. And to be in it now is sort of surreal. Especially such a nice one. And I'm not just saying that because it's my truck. The driver before me made it into such a nice truck. And now it's my job to maintain it and make it better than I found it. Which was already amazing. So I gotta make it like double amazing. We are here. I got your wood, eh? Your Canadian wood. Got it right here for you, eh? Got it, got it under the tarps there. I'll just take the tarps right off, eh? Five miles per hour. Oh, I can do that for you. All I ask is that you take this weight off me. It's weighing me down. I don't know why I sound like a Minnesotan. It's trying to sound like a Canadian. I don't know. A lot of people would argue that Minnesotans are Canadians. <laughs> We're all the same people. There's just an imaginary line drawn between us. We had a fight once back in the day. We've never really solved it. We just said, okay, that side's yours, this side's ours. It works best that way. Where am I supposed to go? They don't want me on the... Where's the shipping and receiving door? Loading dock, outbound shipments. Oh, is it inside? No, that's outbound shipments. Inbound, I am inbound. Josh, get it together. Hello, I want to give you some stuff. I brought it all the way here just for you. Where do I go? I'll figure it out, I'll figure it out. I'll talk to you guys in a bit here. There's a guy walking over there, I'm gonna go talk to him. I think I went too far. I think it's on the other side of the building. Well, that was a pretty quick unload. Just quickly ripped off the tarps. Went inside the building there. It was only eight lifts of 21 foot lumber. He knocked those off and boom, I was out of there. So here I am, I'm just taking out some of my garbage to keep my truck clean. I'm gonna go into the truck stop here. Uh, we're just down the road in uh, Pillager. Pillager, Minnesota. Gonna quickly run in there, grab a coffee for the road. We're gonna head on down to Rosemont. Running a little bit later than I wanted to, but the load's waiting there for us, so we'll go hook up, get as far as we can tonight, 
and then tomorrow we'll be home. And I'll be home for the weekend. What town is this? I think that's the interstate right there. No, wait, no, that's Minnesota 23. So hard to tell what town you're in because in, in the US there's so many towns. Just town after town after town after town after town. And they all sort of blend in. We're very close to Minneapolis. I think this might be St. Cloud. I don't know, I don't know. I'm just trucking. Don't really care where I am. I know I'm in Minnesota. I can see on the GPS there approximately where I am. Minnesota is that way. On Minnesota, pardon, Minneapolis, St. Paul, which is in Minnesota. I'm hoping we get to hit the freeway soon. It looks like I'll be running parallel to the freeway for some reason. Rosemont is on the southwest corner of Minneapolis, uh, St. Paul. I think St. Paul's on the east side, right? So it's like south of St. Paul. My turn. My turn. Come on. Come on. I'm slowly getting better at shifting this truck. The throttle on this engine and on this truck is very touchy. Very touchy. So you sort of just gotta feather it with your toes. Minnesota is such a beautiful state. You know, it's just like Manitoba. They have a, a lot of lakes, a lot of cottage properties and stuff, but here there's just so many more people that there's, they make more use of their lakes. In Manitoba, most of our lakes are completely like uh, isolated. There's no people living anywhere around that you gotta fly in. That's why fly in fishing is so popular up there, right? Americans from here who love to fish, drive up to like Southern Manitoba or Ontario next door, and they'll take a float plane up to the Northern Lakes. That's the only way you can get up there. And that is pristine pristine fishing. And that's where the good stuff is. But it's nice down here because, you know, every lake sort of has its own community of cottages around it. I guess that's sort of the Minnesotan thing to do. You go to the cottage on the weekends. Or maybe you live there year-round. I mean, you probably live there and work nearby, maybe. I don't know. That'd be awesome, just living on a lake. Go fishing every day. I don't do a lot of fishing. I wish I did, but uh, I don't have a boat and I don't have time. I could rent a boat, that'd be no problem, but uh, I don't have a lot of time. I have a truck though. Can't have everything. I'm getting better with my shifting. I still need to practice a bit. This truck is much different than that Peterbilt. This is an 18-speed manual, obviously. Well, you can see me shifting, it's manual. It's an 18-speed, which means you can split the lower gears and the higher gears. I don't use them all, but they're there if I need them when I'm pulling a heavy load up the hills. And like I was saying earlier, it's kind of comfortable. The height of this shifter, it's just perfect. I don't know, I like it. It's a nice place, nice placement. Not too high, you don't want it like up here. Yeah, but the driver before me had very similar tastes. Or maybe I guess I got similar taste to him because he he made this truck what it is, and I really like it the way he made it. Uh, I just want to add a few things to make it my own yet. Like I'd like to change the steering wheel, but for now this steering wheel is actually pretty good. I like it. It's a little bit worn because it's a little bit old, just like the truck. But uh, and this piece up here on the shifter needs to be replaced. But 
I like what he did with it. I don't want to change that. I just want to add a few things to it. Rides very smooth. Very smooth ride. Just glides. I really like it. The suspension on this truck is uh, well thought out. I just, one day I want to put a, an air ride front suspension on this just so that the only reason is so that when I park it, I can lower the bumper right down to the ground. That's the only reason. It also offers a smoother ride yet, but uh, I mean, this is pretty smooth already. We'll see. I'm waiting for this truck to bring in money first. And you also gotta remember that we're starting a family soon. That's gonna take a lot of money. So that comes first, obviously. But I do make a little bit of money off these YouTube videos. And I'll probably allocate some of that towards, you know, building up this truck into a show truck. So really, if, if you wanna help me build my truck for free, you can just watch my videos. And I appreciate your patience with the ads that show up. Uh, I really do. That is what has gotten us through our IVF. Actually, that uh, helped us pay for our IVF. So I do, I do appreciate your patience with those. And in the future, some of that will probably go to uh, get this truck show ready. I feel like 65 is way too fast for here, but that's the speed limit. I'm gonna slow her down a little bit to 60. This corner is pretty tight for a 65 mile an hour speed limit. I just saw the sign, it is 65, and my GPS tells me it's 65. Take her a little easy on old blue. I don't need to hammer down around the corners like that. Save my steer tires. Mistakes were made. Surprised Karen's not laughing at me. Well, she is the one that guided me downtown St. Paul. But I saw that we were going through, and it's a freeway, and I'm like, ah, oh, it'll be, it'll be quick. You know, it's a freeway. We'll just buzz right through. Ha ha, I forgot it was rush hour. So here we are, living the dream at W9, downtown St. Paul, Minnesota. in construction season. I wanna take 52 south here. It's not that bad, it's just a lot more people than I wanted to deal with right now. St. Paul, Minneapolis. You guys got a lot of people. You guys got a lot of people. It's a problem. It's spread out. What? No, I'm not gonna take that exit over there. I'm over here. You told me to be in this lane. No, I'm going this way. I do wanna go in the 52 though. Why is the 52 exit over there? It's also over here, right? It's there or here. Better be. Karen, you don't even know what lane I'm in. What kind of navigator are you? It's hard to tell me where to go when you don't even know what lane I'm in. lead me into a pickle. Oh, this big thing. There we go. So we did end up on the 52. See? 52 south. I've been here many times before. I just, I always try to avoid downtown during rush hour. Except for today. Didn't think. Exactly rush hour and here we go, floating through downtown. I'm not always the brightest guy, but I did get through there. I didn't hit anything, so that was good. It's always good. I think we're on the other side now because traffic is actually moving. 
traffic on the other side of downtown was, oh, man. I forgot how good we had it in Winnipeg. Hey, it's me again, future Josh. This trip was uh, chaotic, to say the least, and uh, that was my footage from the day. I'm gonna give you a little bit of footage after this from yesterday, a little sneak peek of yesterday, so you can see the load that I was going to pick up. It took me a while, I had to chain it down. It took seven chains, it's a big piece of concrete, you'll see, and it was an oversized load, so I had to uh, wait for my permits to make sure that I was able to you know, start rolling down the road with it legally. Everything went well. Other than that, by the time I got there, uh, it had started to get dark. Started to get dark already, so I waited till the next day to, to to film the load. Not much use filming when you can't see anything, right? But thanks for watching today. Anyways, I've been having fun. Uh, the truck has been running marvelously, incredible, better than I could have ever imagined. And some of you were asking what that little yellow light is in my tachometer. Is that what you in the RPM gate, whatever? The little red yellow light there it's my trailer abs light there's nothing wrong with the trailer abs light uh there must have been a loose connection in my my cord coming from my truck i kept fixing it i'd go out there i'd fix it it would turn off and then i'd take another corner a little ways down the road it would pop back on again and have to pull over at the first safe spot and then you know, fix it again but eventually down the road uh i think in this next clip at the end of the day i finally figured out uh, what was going on and uh, got that issue solved. It wasn't that there was a problem or anything, it was just a, a connection issue in the wires. And uh, it was annoying me too, but I was trying to ignore it because I was having so much fun. <laughs> not ignoring that there might, not ignoring the issue, just ignoring the light, because I knew there wasn't an issue. It was all good. So <laughs> no need to worry about that. I've had a few questions about that already. I know, my first trip, and it wasn't an engine light though, okay? So yeah, that was nothing to worry about and you shouldn't see that in an upcoming world. Sometimes that happens in the, there's that, that cord. It's like a green cord that connects the lights and everything to the trailer. Sometimes if there's a loose connection in there and it's just not connecting right, it'll pop the ABS light on when you take a corner and all of a sudden it'll disappear. It'll pop back on. It's very annoying sometimes. Sometimes it's the trailer and then it's very annoying because you can't figure out where it is and you got to report it to the shop and they got to figure out where it is. But uh, in this case, I, I found the issue and, uh, and, and got it solved there. So now there's like a little 30 second sneak peek of tomorrow's video where you get to see the load that I loaded up there near Minneapolis, Minnesota. We're gonna pull that back home here to get to where I am right now, editing this video in my messy office. Really need to clean this place up. That's one of my projects for today. Today has to get done. It's not that bad. It's not that bad, is it? It's pretty bad. <laughs> All of this stuff is being moved to the shop eventually anyways, right? Cheers. No more coffee left in there. That's disappointing. Oh, oh, coffee grinds are in there though. Coffee grounds, grinds, grounds, grounds, grinded grounds. Okay, I'm wired, I need to get back to editing. So thanks for watching. I'll show you a clip of tomorrow a little bit there. Don't forget to subscribe. My computer's very excited. Uh, that means he wants you to subscribe. Hit the like button if you did like the video, and I will see you in my next video. Uh, there, there should be, uh, I said video there twice. That's okay, you guys will forgive me. There should be a couple of videos coming out today. I'm really trying to catch up. I wanna be caught up before I leave on my next trip. Got us a load of concrete today. Bringing us back up to Manitoba. Picked it up in Minnesota here. Yesterday was a crazy day again. I think it's a pretty good looking load. I had to move the fifth wheel back just a little bit. Go, 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 go is the name of the game. So it's uh, nine foot four wide. We've got our permits with us, of course. But we're ready to get trucking. Let's go.